Action. Research has shown us that the brain processes each individual letter as it reads. It does not read a word as a whole stimulus. In a fluid reading brain, that can happen as quickly as 250 milliseconds. And in that time, what the brain has done is visually processed the shape of the letter, identified it, given it its name, attached it to sound, and then blended it with all the other sounds that it has gone through that process with. The dyslexic brain does not inherently do this because it does not analyze words as parts, but as a whole stimulus. So the way that the brain goes through that process is it takes in the information through the back of our brain, through our visual cortex. And that's where it really says, okay, I have to look at something and give it meaning. Then it shoots that information through the left hemisphere of our brain towards the front of our brain, where it says, okay, now we have to pronounce that sound. In a dyslexic learner, that path isn't always clean or clear. It's like driving along a road that has potholes. The dyslexic brain might have to swerve a little bit, or it might hit a bump in the road, and that's why this process isn't always fluid and efficient. So to teach the dyslexic how to read and understand this letter-sound relationship, we're going to use a systematic approach. We're going to teach them the letters, we're going to teach them the sounds, and then we're going to integrate that knowledge through a multi-sensory approach. A, apple, A. A, apple, A. B, bats, B. Multi-sensory education is important for all students. That means that we're giving every child a different way to absorb whatever instruction I'm providing them with. C, cat, K. C, cat, K. D, dog, D. D, dog, D. The foundation of our phonics program is our call and response card drill, and we really are looking for students in kindergarten to be able to know the sound a letter makes every time that they see that. We do that through being able to talk about the letter name, the keyword, and then the sound that that letter makes. J jug J. J jug The keyword is really important for us because it provides a concrete example for students to fall back on if they can't remember that letter sound. The thing I've learned about children is if you give them a song or a movement, they're much more likely to commit things to memory and for them never to leave. So that's what I try to introduce going through the letter sound. Just the idea that words are made up of sounds. We need to be able to break them apart and be able to read them from that. If we can teach them the proper way to make the letter sounds, the letter shapes, and to really, really understand what they're hearing and seeing, it makes it so much less scary. Because words and letters should be, like, exciting. You don't want them to be scary for children.